Hello, fifth and sixth graders. We are reading our last section of chapter 11 today, which is 11.4, New Frontier. And so we are on page 204, uh, and we're gonna start reading about, as we continue uh, to expand our new nation post-Civil War, as we um, have read about um, new inventions being made and industrial revolutions and um, the country becoming more self-sufficient in and of itself, uh, we're now gonna learn about expanding our borders. So, and we're gonna talk about Alaska, we're gonna talk about Hawaii and how these came into being as part of the United States. So we are on page 204, 11.4, New Frontiers. Alaska, the 49th state. So we'll start right there. So Alaska was our 49th out of 50 states. England, France, and Spain were not the only countries to have a part in the history of America. At the time the 13 colonies won their independence from England, Alaska belonged to Russia. People called it Russian America. The Russians were interested in the furs and the fish they could find in Alaska. In 1867, our country's Secretary of State, William H. Seward, received a visitor from the Russian government. During that visit, it became evident that Russia wished to sell Russia America for $7,200,000. Most Americans thought of Russia America as a worthless land of ice and snow but these people had never been to Alaska. Alaska had rich farmland and much natural beauty to offer. At that time, no one knew of the great riches in gold and natural resources such as coal and petroleum that would one day be found in Alaska. These riches would make the $7 million seem like a very small price. Seward urged our government to buy Russia American. Russian America. He knew the wealth of valuable furs that could be trapped up there. The purchase would also open a way for a large and profitable fishing industry. At last, our government accepted the offer. Although many Americans scoffed at the purchase, they called Russia America Seaward's Folly and Seaward's Icebox. The, American, the United States changed the name of Russia America to Alaska. Fishing and furs soon proved to be very valuable. In the year 1896, gold was discovered and the Alaskan gold rush began. Alaska soon paid for itself many times over. No longer could Americans mock their purchase of Alaska. Alaska did not become a state when it was purchased. It became a territory of the United States. Because they lived in a territory, the people of Alaska could not vote in our national elections or choose their own government. Instead, the President of the United States appointed a governor for Alaska. The governor could then tell our government what Alaska needed. Alaska did become a state, the 49th state, in January of 1959. All right, so few things about Alaska. It was the 49th state to join our union. It is rich in fur trade, fishing, and farming. Gold and petroleum, which is what we use for a lot of things. Gasoline, heating oil, um, all of those things come from petroleum. All right. Gold and petroleum were later found. It was first a territory of the United States and became a state or part of the Union in 1959. Okay, next we are going on to Hawaii. Very different climate, very different culture, um, but also joining the Union. And this is the 50th state. 
The state of Hawaii consists of eight large islands and over 110 smaller islands. The largest island is named Hawaii, from which the island gets their group name. This beautiful group of islands in the Pacific Ocean is more than 2,000 miles away from the coast of California. <laughs> How then did Hawaii become our 50th state? To answer this question, we must go back in time about 200 years. The English explorer, Captain James Cook, discovered Hawaii, which he named the Sandwich Islands in 1778. For the next 40 years, British and American explorers, adventurers, and whalers stopped at the Hawaiian Islands for food and supplies on their way to and from China. These visitors had a deep influence on the Hawaiian people, who had for years been worshiping false gods. Contact with people who believed in the one true God made the Hawaiian people want to find out more about God. In 1820, Christian missionaries began arriving in the Hawaiian Islands from America. Ready for the message of salvation, many Hawaiians accepted Christ. Many Christian churches and schools were also started. Other Americans came to Hawaii to, write, to raise pineapples and sugarcane. They hired islanders to work their plantations. Most of the crops were sold to the United States. Soon the islanders became, began dependent on their trade with the United States. As the years passed, the Americans who were living in Hawaii wanted the islands to become part of the United States. In 1900, Hawaii, sorry, in 1900, the United States Congress voted to make Hawaii a United States territory like Alaska. But like the people of Alaska, the people of Hawaii wanted to become a state. So in 1959, the same year as Alaska, the United States Congress finally voted to accept Hawaii as our 50th state. This happened in 1959. So Hawaii was originally So Hawaii was originally um, inhabited by natives who worshiped false gods. As more and more outsiders came to the islands, they were introduced to Christianity and many turned their lives to the Lord. Okay, the Spanish-American War. So we've talked about gaining Alaska, which is the farthest north state. We've talked about acquiring Hawaii, which is 2,000 miles off the coast of California. So not even close to our continent, but is considered a state of the union. And now we're going to see our southern borders bordering Mexico and what happens there in order to acquire the land in south. So the Spanish-American War. The island of Cuba, located 90 miles south of Florida, was once Spain's last possession in the New World. Though Spain struggled to keep Cuba, the people of Cuba constantly fought for their independence. Oh, excuse me. In an effort to stop the fighting, the Spanish sometimes created the, treated the Cubans cruelly. In time, the people of the United States grew sympathetic towards the Cubans. Remember the Maine. In February of 1898, our government sent the United States battleship Maine on a peaceful trip to Cuba to protect Americans living there. All went well until a great explosion sank the Maine off the shores of Cuba. Most of her sailors were killed or drowned. 
The people of the United States blamed the Spanish for the explosion, although the Spanish claimed that they did not do it. Remember the Maine became the slogan of many Americas, Americans who felt that we should go to war with Spain. On April 25th, 1898, our government declared war on Spain. The purpose of the Spanish-American War was to set Cuba free from Spain. Because the only way to get to Cuba from either the United States or Spain was by water, the natives or the, the navies of both countries became very important. When the war began, Admiral George Dewey of the United States Navy was sent to the Philippine Islands. Although these islands are in the Pacific Ocean near China, they also belong to Spain. Admiral Dewey sailed into a bay after, of the Philippine Islands where a fleet of Spanish ships were docked. There, the United States Navy destroyed the Spanish ships, receiving only minor damage to American ships. Rough Riders. Meanwhile, Americans were fighting the Spanish in Cuba and on the seas nearby. A group of American men known as Rough Riders was headed by Theodore Roosevelt, who lived from 1859 to 1919, he was president, who would one day, um, sorry, that's how long he lived, who one day would become president of the United States. The Rough Riders played an important part in the winning, in winning the most important land battle fought in the Spanish-American War, the Battle of San Juan Hill. The entire war lasted only three and a half months. It was the shortest war in the United States that they had ever fought until the Persian Gulf War in 1991, which lasted only two and a half months. Results of the Spanish-American War. As a result of the Spanish-American War, Spain gave Cuba her free freedom, and the United States received several islands that had previously belonged to Spain. The Philippines and Guam in the Pacific Ocean and Puerto Rico, an island near Cuba. In return for these islands, the United States paid Spain $20 million. During the years after the war, the United States tried to help the people of these islands by building hospitals and schools. Many missionaries from the United States went to the Philippine Islands and set up churches, schools, hospitals, and colleges. Since there have since then, the Philippians have, the Philippines, <laughs> Philippians, since then, the Philippines have become independent. The people of Puerto Rico and Guam now govern themselves, but are also considered citizens of the United States. So, although they govern themselves and they're kind of independent nations, they are still under the jurisdiction of the United States. They are under our president. And so those living in Puerto Rico and Guam actually kind of hold like a dual citizenship and they're allowed to vote. Um, in our primaries, like we have a primary coming up this fall to vote in a new president or maybe the same president, those living in Guam or in um, Who's mean? Um, Puerto Rico can actually vote for the president, even though they're not considered one of the 50 states, they are under the jurisdiction of the state, the country. All right, some questions to answer. So take out your packets for 11E. And um, some things we're gonna identify. First, identify the title and name of the man who urged our government to buy Russia America. So go back and see which man urged the government and said, this is a good idea, we should do this, to buy Russian America? Number two, identify two crops that Americas went to Hawaii to raise. So go back to your Hawaii section, and what two crops specifically could they raise um, and would bring money in? Um, number three, identify the American ship that mysteriously sank off the shore of, the Cu of Cuba. So go back and think about what the name of that ship was. Number four, identify a group of Americans who were led by Theodore Roosevelt and who played an important role in the Battle of San Juan Hill. So that's something you can look back in your book. Um, we actually just read that. Think, how and when did the Alaskan Purchase provide or prove to be profitable? So did it 
Was it profitable right away? Did they have to establish some things? And what made it so profitable? What natural resources or industries were there that allowed for them, um, for you guys to, sorry. Um, how and when did the Alaskan purchase first prove to be profitable? So um, what kinds of things were in Alaska um, that made it profitable? So a lot of people said, oh, it's just a frozen wasteland. That's a waste of our money. But what natural resources were there that America then was able to use um, and find and sell, uh, which became very profitable? And number six, name the two results of the Spanish-American War. So what two things happened as a result of the Spanish-American War? And you can actually see that right on the next column. It says, as a result of the Spanish-American War, and goes ahead and lists that. Okay, so the Spanish-American War, just to leave some notes on our board here that we forgot to put. So as a result, this will help you out with answering your question right now, Spain, gave Cuba her freedom, and several islands were given to the United States. For $20 million. These included Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. Okay, so go ahead and answer those questions in your packets. Do your best on them. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And this is the end of chapter 11. Um, we are going to be going on to a um, chapter review, I'm pretty sure. Let me look. Seeing we have one more week. Yep, we have a chapter review for chapters 10 and 11. And then we are done social studies for the year. Unbelievable. Great job today, guys. Um, if you are interested in these topics that we learned about, go through and um, see if you can find some videos. I know, again, I sent some to your parents that you can watch, but go through and find some videos or some books on the history of Alaska and Hawaii. Dig a little bit deeper into what Hawaiian culture looked like before it became a state and how that is still seen today. Um, and also into Cuba. Uh, recently, this year, Cuba's borders reopened um, so that we could have travel and trading between the United States and Cuba. So look into what that, um, why that was and what Cuba's history is with America. Really interesting stuff that we're still living out today. Great job today, guys, and I will see you later.